Hello, buddy. Welcome back to the Tin Man's Corner channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, and today I'm going to be reacting to another Taylor animated video for you guys, and it's his uh, animated evolution of Iron Man slash Tony Stark. So, without further ado, I'm going to turn the lights off, point you guys to my computer, and let's get this show on the road, shall we? All right, here we go. Tony Stark was just your run-of-the-mill genius billionaire playboy weapons dealer until he was attacked and captured by terrorists. Then, with the help of his cellmate, he turned a pile of scraps into an iron opportunity. This is Iron Man's evolution. Animated. To stop shrapnel from entering his heart, Tony equips himself with a mini arc reactor that also powers his suit. His first suit, the bulky Mark I. Which, I thought this suit actually looked cool being his first suit, you know. I and mean, you could just make anything like that out of scrap. He is mostly bulletproof and features both a flamethrower and missile launcher to defend against oh, his yeah. captors. Plus, jet boots capable of flight to aid in his escape. Once free, Tony vows to never sell weapons again and creates the Titanium Steel Mark II. This suit... Now, that one I like because it's just plain uh, Jane Silver. And... Uh, I mean, it just looks cool being like another prototype, in other words. Features the Jarvis AI system. I'm online, sir. Added repulsors and Unibeam. A heads-up display and enhanced flight abilities. Although, it ices up at high altitudes. But this is fixed by adding gold alloy to the Mark III suit composition. In addition to red coloring, shoulder-mounted guns, kinetic mic... Now, I think I like that one better. <laughs> Since this is his first armor with the red and gold color scheme missiles and additional flares with this update stark faces his former business partner turned i thought the ironmonger was a cool um villain to add in the first movie because it was kind of based off of the mark one iron man armor i like that approach and i thought jeff bridges nailed it as a villain turned ironmonger in Iron Man 2, the brighter, more streamlined Mark IV, which adds the ability to filter P, is warm brief. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> I mean, your filter might not be able to filter all the P. <laughs> and you'll be drinking deadly toxins or something. You never know. But I do like the uh, upgrade suit from Iron Man 2 right here. Until later on, he, well, which he's going to get to, the Mark VI. I like that one as well. As well as the Mark V, which transforms from a suitcase That's to cool. thin plated red and silver armor. And only kind of like the animated show in the 90s where Tony Stark just picked up a suitcase and it unfolded his suit out of it. And he just puts his body into it and boom, it just forms itself around him. I thought that was a cool concept right there. He has his basic weaponry and is less durable due to his various arc I think that's what they were trying to go for in this one. Actors apparently poisoning him, Tony, supplied with a blueprint from his deceased father, creates a new element to power his arc reactors. His next suit, the Mark VI, features silver accents and a triangular... I love that one. Yes. Makes it pop more <laughs> with the silver accents. But yeah, the Iron Man with the triangle chest piece looks way cooler than the circle chest pieces. Is immune and even charged by electricity. Is water resistant, features additional grenade launchers, and has a single use laser. In this suit, he combats the dastardly whiplash. In the Avengers, Tony uses metallic bracelets to deploy the pod shaped Mark VII, which can assemble over Tony in mid. Yeah, uh, when that scene happened, I thought, oh man, he's gonna fall and nobody's gonna catch him, but Jarvis sent out the Mark uh, VII here. <laughs> And I said that was about the nick of time right there. I thought that scene was cool how it just formed over him like the suitcase one did. But more um, advanced. <laughs> it air. It's much bulkier and it's the first suit with its own integrated arc reactor. As well oh. as thrusters on the back to free his hands during flight. Multiple use lasers and much more firepower to defend against unwanted aliens. It's also apparently capable of briefly flying into a wormhole to nuke an alien mothership. In oh. Iron Man 3, in an attempt to manage his PTSD, Tony builds many Jarvis-controlled suits referred to as the Iron Legion. And All right, here we go. This is going to get uh, on the roller coaster ride right here. He built so many in Iron Man 3. Including 
The Mark 8 with added Kevlar for protection against missiles. Come on to find Mark 9 with an additional jetpack. The Mark 10, which has added flight stabilizers for extra speed. Really? The Mark 11, built as a prototype stealth suit with a more detailed helmet. The dark... I like that helmet. ...and gold-plated Mark 12 with durable exoskeleton. The streamlined Mark 13 featuring a powerful rectangular Looks arc cool. reactor. The Mark 14, which is more lightweight for added speed. The stealth suit Mark 15 that slightly camouflages itself with... I like that one. I like that one. It's got all the jagged edges on it. Makes it look more like night armor. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. And switch from light to dark. The Mark 16 with significant upgrades to the camouflaging system. Oh, that's cool. The bulkier cool. Mark 17 with an oversized chest to fit a powerful unibeam. The justice chest heavy Mark 18, which also... Ooh. This Castanova one right here looks like the arc reactor could carry more punch, if you know what I mean. Like, just go... Bam! <laughs> so incorporates the camouflaging system. The uniquely colored Mark 19, built for agility and speed. Oh, I like that The one. black and gold Mark 20, capable of long-distance travel. The fully I gold Mark 21, built for high-altitude flights. The darker Mark 22, with snazzy red flames. Pop! He's about to say it a little bit, but I said Rhodey could have wore that suit in Iron Man 3 when uh, they were trying to defeat Ames and all them extremist-infused people. Possibly intended as a war machine armor for Tony's friend Rhodey. The smooth camo-armored Mark 23 capable of withstanding extreme heat. The bulky brown and gold Mark 24 built to endure heavy fire power. Tank, I like that the Mark 25, one. which boasts powerful jackhammer arms. The green accented Mark 26, which retains the jackhammers and is able to resist powerful elements including gamma radiation. Oh. The blue and orange Mark 27, the only armor able to completely camouflage into its surroundings. The heavy orange and black Mark 28, which, like Mark 26, is built to withstand radiation. The durable gray Mark 29, which features a singular jackhammer arm. The sleek silver and blue Mark 30 and the updated deep red Mark 33, which both contain retractable vibrations. Those two I like right there, because that's supposed to be like the silver centurion right here. Armor. And I love that design in the comics as well. I was glad they brought that into the movies. And this, I think that's supposed to be like, a, almost like the Arctic version of that suit. I'm not sure, but it does look cool. Vibranium blades and are able to transfer energy to certain ports for extra power. The lightweight teal Mark 31 able to reach high velocity speeds. The dark silver Mark 32, which has an enlarged unibeam but was built to be more agile. The huh. silver plated Mark 34, which incorporates a left handed claw arm. The beefy red Mark 35 that can attach not one but two. Red claw snapper, arm. Yeah, I saw that in the movie. I loved when he said, Our breaker, help Red Snapper out, would you? <laughs> the similarly plated orange and silver Mark 36 made for peacekeeping and crowd control. The light green Mark 37 built for deep underwater travel. Like, hold on. Let's go back to that one. Like, you really need an Iron Man suit for that when you can build, like, those Iron Legion robots and Age of Ultron for that purpose. But hey, it's a cool concept. Peacekeeping and crowd control. The light green Mark 37 built for deep underwater travel and the only armor to be stocked with torpedoes. That one's cool. The massive blue Mark 38 capable of lifting enormous amounts of weight. More like the predecessor to the Hulkbuster. The white and black Mark 39 built for space travel. I like the that one. Gray and light blue Mark 40 which can reach speeds exceeding Mach 5. Man, I'll feel like a quick roller coaster right here just go. <laughs> and the thinly plated Mark 41, which can disassemble and reassemble well, mid-flight. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think they said that you can also add different armor modules and stuff to it. Like, that's why some of the errors are exposed. So that's a cool concept as well. <sighs> In the same film, after inserting microchips into his arms, Tony is able to don the primarily gold and lightweight Mark 42 piece by... I love that scene, but then when they, uh... Uh... Cop piece him in the um, privates. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Go ping, ow! But then when he uh, had his mask flow to him, and he just did the whole rotate thing for it to uh, connect. It was funny when the back piece flew in and hit him and knocked the armor right off completely. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, you should have turned down the uh, thrusters on each part." <laughs> 
by Peace. This armor carries over many skills and attributes from the Iron Legion and can be piloted remotely by Tony with an AR display headset. That's cool. This time around, Tony battles a vengeful former nerd with help from his many armors. Following the battle, to prove his affection to his girlfriend, Pepper Potts, he destroys all of it. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm disappointed at that right there. I know he was trying to gain his, you know, girlfriend's affection, but Tony should have known that if, you know, there's future battles ahead that he might need one of them suits. But no, he had to blow them up. <laughs> well, so I can see why he did that as well, because, you know, Marks 1 through uh, 7 got dis destroyed in the display case in his house. But they're the only ones that survived and then blow them up to his iron suits. And then finally get surgery to remove the shrapnel from his chest, eliminating the need for his own arc reactor. Age of Ultron features the traditionally colored Mark. That one I like better right there. Um, the Mark 42 color scheme was all right, but I think the red stands out better on the chest than the gold did. 43, which is infrared to see through wall. And I like that. New addition right there, infrared, and be like a more like a drone suit when Tony gets out of the suit. Well, it incorporates a sentry mode to assist Tony yeah, when he's not mode. wearing it. It can also attach to the humongous Hulkbuster armor. There it is, the Hulkbuster. Huh. Complete with a sedative gas sprayer and hydraulic puncher to subdue a raging Hulk. Tony also makes use of a group of new white There's new Iron, Iron Legion, Legion drop. Yeah, these are good for the peacekeeping crowd control situations right here. Finally, the predominantly red and smooth plated Mark 45 is worn. This suit is marked with a hexagonal chest piece, and since Jarvis became part of a humanoid super being, Hello, Tony. this suit is instead run by the Irish Friday OS. I'm online, boss. In the Mark 45, Tony helps defeat... I thought that would look cool as well. An evil sentient robot. I thought it had more like, uh, if anybody remembers the Bleeding Edge Iron Man suit from the comics. That's what it kind of reminded me of. Uh, which he accidentally created. In Captain America Civil War, the Mark 46 is introduced and features various accent lights. Now that was a bleach age drama, I'm sorry. And the first <laughs> fully retractable helmet. I, I thought that was cool to have the helmet just retract instead of you taking it off or having just the face flip up. Um, Tony pushes for government regulations on the Avengers, but Captain America challenges the proposal, resulting in an Iron Cap clash. While the Mark 46 is able to analyze fighting patterns, Tony ultimately loses, and the Avengers go their separate ways. Then he changes his name to Tony Stank. In spite I thought that was a funny scene that Cap did that, but anyway. Spider-Man Homecoming, Tony uses the more silver Mark... Mark 47, armed with launchable grappling chains and remote Wi-Fi control to keep tabs on Peter Parker from a distance. In Infinity War, Tony lends the Hulkless Bruce Banner the Mark 48, a more streamlined Hulkbuster suit, while Tony is outfitted with a new heart-shaped arc reactor capable of deploying his sleek nanotech Mark 50. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Um, they said the second Hulkbuster was Mark 48. And this is the Mark 50, so what happened to 49? <laughs> like, they did not address it unless they considered um, the rescue armor 49, but, but that's Pepper Potts armor. This suit can form extra wings and weapons, as well as cannons, shields, and thrusters, helping him reach over Mach 10 and is perfectly sealed for traveling in space. It can shoot off some of its nanotech and produce a suture spray to help heal wounds. Although, all of this still isn't enough to prevent Thanos from snapping away. I was mad when they did that, uh, or Thanos did that. Half of the universe. And in game, Tony is starving and floating through space. But he's brought back to Earth and then raises a family. He gifts his wife the blue and gold Mark 49 rescue. Okay, so they are considering her armor as the 49. Two armor, featuring a displacer pack that can emit energy blasts. Meanwhile, Tony helps figure out time travel and sports a gray and red quantum realm suit as he goes back in time to help gather magical time stones. Yeah, I thought I'd never see the day where the Avengers went back in time to, you know, fix things like that, or I thought that would be impossible for them to figure it out, but Tony figured it out. And says a quick hello to his father. His latest iron suit, the Mark 85, features... Yeah, he just jumps right over from Mark 50 to Mark 85. I was going like, why'd you do that? I said, I would love to see, like, Mark's 51 all the way up to 
84, right? Be like, what are they? Are they nano suits too? Or are they full on metal suits that don't go into a chess piece thing like this one? But the concept is still cool. OG gold colored thighs and shoulders with added power to generate force fields and redirect lightning blasts. This suit's gauntlets are capable of holding the infinity stones that he uses to snap Thanos out of existence, causing Tony to sacrifice his life for humanity's survival. I almost cried up seeing that scene too, folks. And ultimately bookending the Iron Man MCU story. Well, until they dig him up for some prequel, sequel, side pull movies. Thanks for watching the video. Ooh, I tell you, Tony was a genius and created a bunch of Iron Man armors for the MCU. But anyway, if I had to pick some that I would wear myself, I said I would have to go with either Mark 43 from Avengers Age of Ultron, Mark 6 from Iron Man 2 and part of Avengers 1. Uh, let me see, what was the other one? Maybe the Silver Satorian or his the twin brother with the blue and silver colors on it. Uh, also, maybe the uh, Mark 85 nanotech armor. But yeah, there, there were so many armors in here. I said, man, I wish they didn't kill off Tony. I wanted to see what the other ones look like, you know. But anyway, that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and let me know down in the comments uh, which Iron Man armor is your favorite. And have a nice day, buddy.